from CareCo TV, one of the longest running outdoor programs on television today. Exploring the country and the coast in search of adventures. From the mountains of the great Northwest to the shores of the Atlantic Ocean, this is Americana Outdoors, presented by Garmin. This week on Americana Outdoors, we're beginning with coverage of the AFTCO Collegiate Bass Open. And later, we're heading over to Choke Canyon Reservoir, where Wade Middleton is throwing secret lures swim jigs. Coming off a successful event at Kentucky Lake last month, the Bass Pro Shops Collegiate Bass Fishing Series is off to a hot start this fall. Now the schedule brings them to Lake Dardanelle in Russellville, Arkansas for the AFTCO Collegiate Bass Open. We're at Lake Dardanelle at the Open in Arkansas. Uh, we're sitting in second for school of the year right now. We're going out today, it's day one. See if we can uh, put five good ones in the boat. The AFTCO Collegiate Bass Open is the second double points event of the season in the chase for Bass Pro Shop School of the Year presented by Abu Garcia. Each school's top two teams inside the top 100 of the overall standings at this weekend's event will earn points. That provides many schools with a good chance of surging way up the standings and bolstering their team's ranking. We got these uh, yellow buffs from Collegiate Bass for being ranked number one in school of the year. Real proud of the boys here at Murray and all the hard work we've done all year long. Yes, sir. Got to keep it up. Finish number one. Murray State enters this event in first place for the Bass Pro Shop School of the Year presented by Abo Garcia. Murray State will be sporting those aforementioned buff yellow jerseys while out on the water this week to highlight their ranking as the top team in the nation. Following a win at the Bass Pro Shop's Big Bass Bash presented by Berkeley last month, Murray is riding a huge wave of momentum entering this weekend. Yeah, it's a pretty cool deal. Uh, you know, we got good points going to this event. So this is a big event, you know, it being double points and all. And so it's crucial that we do well here so we can maintain our lead and move on to the next one. It's a, it's a grind. I mean, there's so many good college teams out there and they're all chasing us down. You know how that goes. Yeah, that's tough, but Murray State's worked really hard for it this year. We've got a lot of seniors that are about to graduate, and you know we want to make it happen for them, and they want to make it happen. And everything. Absolutely, been always close. Yeah, always close. It was like past six out of seven years, we're top five or something like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thirteen of the top 15 ranked teams are competing at Lake Dardanelle the next two days. Roughly 1,500 points separate first from 10th, leaving the door open for numerous schools to make a big surge up the standings. We're sitting in fourth right now for school of the year. Um, not where we want to be. We really need this tournament, big points, hoping to move up. We definitely got to catch some more fish to do that, though. Uh, we're sitting in third. Right now for school of the year, we finished second last year. I don't know, we're just trying to fish as many tournaments as we can. I think we got about eight boats up here, so hopefully one or two of us out of the, uh, out of the eight can finish up there in about the top 10 and get us a lot, of, a lot of points for this tournament. Can you take the trolling motor? Yeah, that's a good spot. God, I'm gonna get my rod. <laughs> Whack my partner with a spotted bass. There's number one. Check them just in case. Oh, wait, they only have to be 14. Just got that spot off this little rock point right here. We're flipping wood and he just got bit and this one grabbed it and started swimming at 100 miles an hour to the left. Number one. Up next, we're bringing you weigh-in coverage from day one of the AFTCO Collegiate Bass Open. But first, as we head to break, learn about one of the many great products from AFTCO, the AFTCO Reaper Hoodie. And let me tell you, being from Florida, I'm cold anytime it's under 50 degrees. So whenever we have early spring tournaments up north, I'm freezing. 
This hoodie is the warmest hoodie that I've ever put on, and it's, it has the fisherman in mind. So when you're fishing and it's cold, you go to get up to run, it's got a built-in face mask. So you just put it over, ride out, no problem. I'm wearing the black one here. They've got two camos, a gray and a green for all the hunters out there. Make sure you check them out at AFCO.com. Before the road trips, the cool mornings, the hot cast iron, the short nights, and the long cast. There's one stop that you can't afford to miss. It's time to gear up and camp out at Bass Pro Shops and Cabela's. Save on all your camping essentials, in store and online. Your adventure starts here. Stetson Blaylock! Tom Otten! Hank Terry! Let's go! Garmin Live Scope, I tell you right now, if you don't have it, you are behind. It's just wild. It's like a video game. If you do not have that Garmin Live Scope, you are definitely missing out. Bassmaster Classic Champion! Americana Outdoors, presented by Garmin, is brought to you by Bass Pro Shops and Cabela's. Your adventure starts here. Garmin. Fight your fish, not your fish finder. Ranger Boats, still building legends one at a time. The Aftco Collegiate Bass Open is being contested on Lake Dardanelle in Russellville, Arkansas, with weigh-ins and takeoff happening at Lake Dardanelle State Park. This 34,000 acre lake located on the Arkansas River system provides a beautiful backdrop for the second stop of the Collegiate Bass Fishing Series. Russellville, the town, it's a beautiful place as you can see. The weather's perfect this weekend. We kind of try to like to make it that way, but full of lake, full of fishing, full of outdoor activities. You can see behind me a beautiful Mount Nebo. We have four state parks within a 30 mile radius. We love the outdoors here. Central Arkansas is an outdoor enthusiast's paradise, offering plenty of adventures and great fishing opportunities. The Association of Collegiate Anglers has been contesting premier no-entry fee tournaments on Lake Dardanelle and Russellville for nearly a decade. Year after year, the lake produces great stringers of bass, and hundreds of collegiate anglers from all four corners of the country eagerly flock to the area to compete on this storied fishery. We love to see the anglers come into town, and I, from what we hear, the anglers love to be here, so we love having them. Lake Dardanelle is showing out as anglers begin to cross the stage with their day's catch here at Lake Dardanelle State Park. We've now seen numerous bags eclipse the double-digit mark, and anglers who could find those three-pound class fish are contending for the lead. This includes Harbor and Zach from number one ranked Murray State University, who find themselves in the top 10 at the moment with 12.19 pounds. Next up to the stage are Cameron and Cole from Jury University. According to reports of the dock and out on the water, they appear poised to stake claim to the day one lead. This is gonna be our first, mm, I almost said 20 pounds, 1990. Y'all give him a hand. Y'all come up here a minute. The duo from 15th ranked Drury University bring in a five bass limit weighing 19.90 pounds here on the first day of tournament competition. Hey man, we just really grinded out there. Like we just started back catching them about you know, 10:30 and just kind of dialed it in and uh, slowed down a little bit, and you know it just kind of all came together. You know, we really just focused on how we caught that first good one, and it just happened to turn out that we caught five of the right ones. So. That's good enough for first place and a commanding lead at the moment. Cameron and Cole lead the local pairing from Arkansas Tech by nearly five pounds. The bass were biting on Lake Dardanelle today, and now it's time to head straight into day two action. We'll feel a lot better when we have a first fish, because, you know, bites are tough to come across, so. I don't know, we feel, we feel fine, because we didn't catch a fish till 11 o'clock yesterday. It just seems like they're easier to find when the sun comes up, so. Yeah, you got it. Good job. That's a keeper, probably. Yeah. I'm guessing that was the same one. <laughs> oh, he's 15. I think we'd be real happy with 
eight pounds today. <laughs> so. I think it'd be enough. Yeah, I think eight pounds would be enough for us, so. Just a couple of those, a couple little keepers. If we catch ones like that, if we just catch five, you know, ones that are not too big, but just barely keepers, we should be, should be okay. Big it. It's a good one. Stay on. Start somewhere. Put four in the boat so far and one of them about two and a quarter, so hopefully they keep biting and they get bigger. That's a better one. Yes. Go. Yes. And two. Now brush, baby. Ain't quite as big as I thought he was going to be, but. Coming up next, we're continuing our on the water coverage of day two tournament action. And later, we're wrapping up and crowning a winner of the AFTCO Collegiate Bass Open. Groundbreaking designs, unsurpassed quality, and unshakable confidence. Welcome to the Ranger Z500 and Z100 series. Leading the industry for over 50 years, these rigs are custom crafted and loaded with more features and advantages to deliver the ultimate ownership experience. The legendary Ranger Z series, unleash next level performance. Yamaha Outboards, reliability starts here. From sun up to sun down, day in and day out, we work hard, we play hard, and to keep us going during those long hours, we demand performance. <laughs> Angle Coolers, the original high performance cooler. Americana Outdoors, presented by Garmin, is brought to you by Angle, the original high performance cooler. Aftco, any fish, any water. Sunline, the strength to guarantee your confidence. Yamaha Marine, reliability starts here. Welcome back to day two coverage of the Aftco Collegiate Bass Open. Mason Wade and Davis Coleman have just reeled in their first fish of the day. Oh. There might be more than one up there. Mason and Davis enter today in third place after weighing in 14 and a half pounds on day one. With one fish in the boat and another already hooked up, they're off to yeah. a great start on this second day of competition. What's that? Oh. Oh yeah. Maybe. Ooh, that's gonna be close. Baby. Sir. <laughs> Sir. Come on. Oh yeah, he's 15. Sweet. Good deal. The pressure is cranking up on day two as time begins to run out for these anglers before they're due back in for weigh-in. The top two contenders both remain optimistic, knowing that the winning fish could bite in just a matter of seconds. Uh, no, I'm not gonna get worried yet, uh, for sure. Not on this lake. We may, we may pull up on spot and do what we did here yesterday. Here you can't get worried about it until it's over with, <laughs> pretty much. Because I mean, you can pull up on the spot and last five minutes and catch them. We just need one more fish and we'd feel great about today. We only got two right now, but 
I mean, we didn't really expect to catch a whole lot today, honestly. I mean, neither we, ne being here all week, we didn't expect to catch a whole lot, so. I don't know, just one more fish and we'd feel great. So we're gonna hit a couple more spots that we've caught a fish. Maybe a couple brush piles just to see if we can catch one. So. That's oh, a keeper. Keeper though. <laughs> I thought when you set the hook, it looked a lot bigger than that. Number three. 1164, that is gonna put you at 2383. How about a 1323? Two day total, 24, 65. Day two weigh in is well underway back at Lake Dardanelle State Park. Baker and England from Arkansas Tech hold the lead at the moment, leaving Breeden and Smith from Drury University needing roughly five pounds to take the tournament victory. Did you enjoy the night being in the lead? No, you didn't. Okay. 662, new leaders. All right, back in the lead. Cole Breeden and Cameron Smith from Drury University bring in just enough Lake Dardanelle bass to claim the win here at the Aftco Collegiate Bass Open. Today's bag combined with their day one limit of nearly 20 pounds gives Breeden and Smith a two day total of 26.52 pounds. The Drury University anglers best second place by more than a pound and a half to claim their first major collegiate victory. After after we weighed in and overcame second place, I mean, our, we had six six sixty, and that was a lot more than we thought we had. So it's an amazing feeling when it happens because you know, like you put in the time, you put in the work to do it, but then you just got to know it's your day. Like, just, just you gotta go out there and do but. it. So. Breeden and Smith earn upwards of $5,000 in prizes and contingencies for their victory this weekend. That includes claiming both the Ranger Cup and the Garmin Tournament Rewards. To go along with the cash and prizes, they also earn 1,000 points for Drury University in the race for the Bass Pro Shop School of the Year presented by Abu Garcia. Here's a look at the top 10 following this weekend at Lake Dardanelle. Murray State is able to hold on to first place, but several teams in the top five are closing in. Both Adrian College and the University of Montevallo are less than 250 points behind that first place ranking. The AFCO Collegiate Bass Open is the final event of the fall out in the Bass Pro Shops Collegiate Bass Fishing Series, and the chase for Bass Pro Shops School of the Year presented by Abu Garcia is guaranteed to be one for the record books. Coming up, we're heading over to Choke Canyon Reservoir, where Wade Middleton is throwing secret lures swim jigs. Your time on the water is precious. You return season after season to make unforgettable memories, fight a few fish, reconnect with friends, and recenter yourself. If you count on having this time, you need an outboard you can count on to power it. That's why boaters stay with Yamaha for the long run, for life. They know reliability starts here. You know that guy that's always bringing in big ones from offshore? He's got secret lures. That guy that can pull out his spinning rod and start catching them when you can't buy a bite? He's got secret lures. What about that guy that can follow you down the bank and catch what you left behind? He's got secret lures. Oh, ah, yeah, good one. If you're ready to be that guy, get your secret lures today at secretlures.com. You've been waiting all week for this, and Sunline wants to make sure you're ready for it with bulk spools of all your favorite fishing lines. That's oh, so fun. Bulk up with Sunline. Americana Outdoors, presented by Garmin, is brought to you by Secret Lures. The secret is out. Outdoor Action TV. Stream your favorite shows. Power Pole. Total Boat Control. We're joining Wade Middleton at Choke Canyon Reservoir, where he's throwing a secret lure swim jig in some rather cloudy conditions. You know, swim jigs are such a great bait for covering 
covering water. I mean, you can basically reel and twitch and pump your rod and impart a lot of action on them and, and make a lot of casts in a very short period of time, which means that it's a bait for covering water, generating strikes really fast and telling you if they're fish in the area. Golly, come out of there. Golly. You know, that's why a swim jig is so effective. You can see that brush right there. I just reeled it through that four trees, there, little forks in the tree right there, and bam! I mean, he just come up and smashed it right away. You know, that's a that's a good aggressive bite. And there's been a lot of boats come through here a lot of times with spinner baits, and it's just a different look. It just provides a different look to everything you're doing. God, what a strike. God, the fish jumped all the way out of the water. That is swim jig fishing right there. Golly. Like I was talking about, I made five casts to that tree, made one to that one, and he just sharked out of the water for it. That is so cool. What a bite. What a bite. Big old chunky fish right there. When you look at a swim jig, this is the secret lure swim jig, and they've got three different ones. They've got one for the north, one for the south, and then really a, a real heavy duty one. Multitude of different weight sizes as well to be able to allow you to mix up you know, your presentations. Right now, there's a lot of grass underneath the water right here, so I'm trying to basically reel one that's a little bit lighter. And I, I really am kind of fishing it like a lot of traditional people would fish an old school spinner bait or something like that, but you've got a total different look for the fish to want to be able to, to bite it and react to it. Trailer wise, I mean, you've got a multitude of different trailers that you can put on here. I'm actually using a swim bait trailer right here from Big Bite Baits that kind of basically mimics a bluegill and gives it a nice little tail kick coming through here as you go along and you've got a weed guard as well to kind of protect that heavy duty hook and you know down here I want as big a hook as I possibly can. There he is. Golly that fish has just annihilated it. Got him right in the brush. <clears throat> Another good one out of the hardwoods. He has that swim bait all the way down in there. Look at that. Such a great dynamic bait for fishing in this type of cover. Just a steady retrieve, a little pumping action, keep that skirt moving. Water temperature over 60, I mean, it is a dynamite way to catch a lot of fish. You know, and for me, I think rod selection is as important in this as anything. Um, I do not recommend a rod over seven foot two. I like a six nine or a seven one. This is actually a six foot nine medium heavy right here, which I think is absolutely perfect for this type of fishing. Uh, too big a rod, your accuracy really goes down and, and an accurate cast in and around this cover is, is really important. For me, maximum lengthwise, seven foot one would be a max. Nothing really, really light. This is not a light technique, you know, as far as light actions, light lines, you need something that's got some power, something you can be able to control these fish, but have a tip that's going to allow you to be able to, to throw the bait accurately. Reel wise, a fast reel. You want those eight three to one type reels that are going to reel and, and gather a lot of line with each crank. They come out here in the creek edge. You know, this is such a fun technique to generate bites in so many different manners. And when you get a day that you think the fish are really aggressive, the old swim jig really can pay off in a lot of good bites and some giants as well. Swim jig fishing will actually wear your arms out a little bit because you're imparting a lot of action on the bait. You're making a cast out in and around cover. You're pumping that rod a lot of times, you know, four to five, six inches at a time, kind of twitching it, moving your hands a little bit. I'll even move in the boat sometimes back and forth to get the right angle. You've really got to let the fish tell you what's going on. But once they tell you what's going on, that bite of a swim jig is one of the most exciting bites you can have. Hey, thank you for watching, and join us next week on a new episode of Americana Outdoors. 
Americana Outdoors is a Careco TV production. I got my power pole down. Stuck in the mud in the bottom of the lake. Sitting so still in the wind and the waves. Could even be a hurricane. I got my power pole down. You know, when I look at the tournaments I've won, probably four or five of the boats that I've won have been on a tube. But I had completely gotten away from flipping a tube because nobody, nobody made one soft enough. Big Bite has come with this new tour series of baits. The thing that's probably the most unique is when you look at that bait, the salt just rolls out of it. And to me, that is the reason a fish bites a tube and hangs on to it. This isn't one of those, let's go out and catch some smallmouth tube. This is a let's get it done tube.